Hello and welcome back to the port. I'm the Gav Measure and this is a review of the Japanese Tier 4 Premium Cruiser Yahangi, available at Step 40 of the Big Mama Campaign if you have Amity backing. Now this is a game of Domination on Straight. On the enemy team we have a Matsuki, Hatsuharu, uh, Krasti Krem, Yahagi, Omaha, Graf Spey, Nuremberg, Konig and California spawned on the left in the Alpha Objective. And I'm going to try and play a bit of the uh, Alpha Objective if I can. Now, Jahagi is one of the four strong class of Ag Anno class light -click cruisers, which were launched between 1941 and 1944. Now, Jahagi was launched in October 1942 and commissioned on the 29th of December 1943, 77 years ago to the day of this uh, review being launched on YouTube. And now, she took part in the battles of the Philippine Sea, uh, Leyte Gulf, and off of Samar, and she was eventually sunk during the op Operation Tenga. So, survivability wise, in comparison to the tier 4 Tech Tree cruisers, uh, she has a below average HP of 25,700 and she has no torpedo bulge uh, to mention. Uh, it's obviously from looking at the banding of the armor, it would appear that she's on the fin side. However, it's always best to go back to the port and have a look at that armor view. So here we are looking at the armour and uh, what can we take away? Well first of all that you can see is that her um, bow and stern ends are very thinly plated and you're mostly looking at about 13 millimeters, um, so not going to be very resistant to a lot of shell calibers or all in general I guess you could say. Uh, going on to the uh, superstructure again this is very thinly plated however there is obviously the usual armoured section at the front which is the uh, well the citadel as in like where the commanders would navigate the ship from uh, during uh, combat. Uh, apart from that it is pretty much a thin plating all over. Um, so not really going to be resistant to uh, much, uh, probably perfect for a bit of HE spam. Going on to the turrets, and the turrets are pretty much thinly plated. Uh, again, you're looking at about 25mm on the barbette, which is reasonable enough, but it does mean it's going to get knocked out by large caliber shells. And the actual turrets themselves are actually coated in 19mm, so probably expect the turrets to be knocked out quite easily by high explosive shells of about 8 inch or above sometimes. Going on to the upper belt, and the upper belt is pretty much 13mm, um, not going to be resisting much, you're probably hoping that uh, most shells are either going to be penetrating straight through, um, but usually don't want to be offering a broadside, but that is something to bear in mind that it will hurt. Going on to the Sistel, uh, this kind of shows that, um, yes, you do have a main armoured belt, which is of a 60mm thickness, which is it's all right. I mean, if you angle that, you are going to be able to uh, bounce uh, certain rounds, uh, probably in the region of, well, let's see what we get there. Um, yeah, it just says any AP shells. Yeah, so you can pretty much get that to bounce AP shells. Uh, however, it is worth noting that the rest of it is 20 millimeters. Therefore, if someone shoots you directly in through the stern, uh, you got to think that's going to be going straight through the, the very thin plating and into the system. So you definitely don't want to be caught bow tanking in this. Uh, secondly, you definitely don't want to be caught uh, with an AP shell coming along your ship as well. So you very much want to be probably trying to dodge as much as possible uh, but also making sure that if it is going to hit you try and hope it hits that armored belt where it's going to be uh, bouncing off uh, obviously closer up the better uh, from further away I think plunging fire is going to be really hurting this uh, Yahagi uh, all in all and well let's go back to the game so back in the game and uh, going on to the artillery and we have uh, six six inch guns mounted in three dual gun turrets. We have A turret, B turret super firing, and then we have Y turret at the rear. And those torpedoes, okay. So batches are free. Mm, that could be anything really. So she has a below average range of 13.5 kilometers. Uh, she's also got a better than average reload speed of nine seconds. She has the joint a second slowest turret traverse speed of 30 seconds to do 180 degrees. 
Now she has the second highest HE shell damage and the joint second highest fire chance with those shells. She, but she does have the weakest AP shell damage. I think we will. Mm. Let's launch the plane first. Sorry, I'm just going to focus on this Hatsuhara. Right here, I do apologise, where was I? I think I was talking about the DPMs. Uh, so she has the average HE DPM. Uh, she also has a um, average fires per minute at 5.2. Uh, you're also looking at having the second worst AP DPM. Mostly bounces. So this is a very spectacular issue we're having with the enemy all flexing at the same time. Although the Krasny Krems there uh, fought better of it at the last moment. Going on to the torpedoes, uh, you have a big yield torpedoes and narrow launch. Narrow launch, yep, yeah, confirmed, definitely narrow launch. Big yield, yes, you do have the highest torpedo damage uh, for the tier, so yep, yeah, I'd say I agree with that. Now you have two quadrupled launchers mounted on the center line, and these have the slowest reload speed per launcher and per tube. Now you do have, um, like I was saying, you do have those proper big yield torpedoes, unlike the Benham. Um, I still don't know how they managed to cut it at the Benham as big yield torpedoes when it takes pretty much all your torpedoes to hit on target in order to actually kill a battleship. So, um, you have um, the largest uh, detectability on these torpedoes of 1.6 kilometers, and you have an average speed of 60 knots. Uh, what this means then is that the enemies will have the longest response time to your torpedoes. But it's worth mentioning that your torpedoes do have the longest range of 12 kilometers. Oh no. Oh yes, okay. We know which one we're going to focus. I think we got out of that one only just though. I think we're talking about the maneuverability next, uh, which um, yeah, she she's given the trait fast, which I don't completely agree with because she has an average speed of 35 knots, and she, but she does have an average turn circle of 690 meters and the best rudder shift of 5.1 seconds. Going on to concealment, and you have the third best by sea and air, and the second best from smoke. Going on to the consumables, and you are looking at having two engine boosts, which increase your engine speed by 8% for 120 seconds with 180 second reload. Um, now, this will take your base speed from 35 knots to 37.8 knots. However, I don't feel that she should be given the fast track, being that her with engine boost, she's 0.8 knots faster than the fastest base speed cruiser for the tier. And I think given her a trait based on the consumable that she's only going to be able to use for 240 seconds isn't the right thing that they should do. Um, when it comes to a fast trait, it should be a fast base speed, not fast with an engine boost. Okay, let's see if we can hunt this Hatsuhara a bit more effectively. 
Going on to the Catapult Fighter, which I've just launched. Uh, this has the worst DPS for the tier, so it's not exactly going to be uh, winning many dogfights. It's actually worse than the Italians. Uh, it has a 90 second duration, um, which is shorter than the usual 360 second duration that you're used to, but it still has a 180 second reload. When it comes to the, your sonar, uh, you get two of these, and these are your standard cruiser sonar for the tier. Uh, now, these will detect ships at 3.7 kilometers and torpedoes at 2.7 kilometers. It has a 90 second duration and a 180 second uh, reload. Now, as always, down in the description will be the commander build and the modules used by myself during this review. However, I should let you know that I have taken Avian Systems Module 1. Um, just trying to guess what the Hatsu Haru would have done with all of her maneuverability. She's kind of gone this way, but then she must have doubled back. So just reading her torpedoes. However, she's getting spotted by my aircraft. And we know she's fired both her launchers, and there she goes. Very nice. So that just leaves uh, the Matsuki. So, um, it's always worth mentioning that she does come with a permanent camouflage, which is a, the equivalent to the Type 4 uh, consumer camouflage, and this does uh, reduce your detectability by minus 4.5% and increase income and dispersion by 4.5% as well, making you basically um, yeah, harder to hit, which is a good thing, uh, considering her very thin armoring. Uh, she's very much an open water kiter, uh, where she can um, be in... You don't want to be getting close to things because obviously the closer you are the harder it is to dodge and you also probably don't want unless it's like a destroyer then you can kind of get away with it um but also like her turrets will get knocked out very easily especially from uh, six inch he sometimes um and you can take a lot of damage especially from high explosives as well so she's not super survivable so I wouldn't say she's going to be replacing my favorite cruiser pick for tier 4 ranked which is the fair attacker um, I, I just think the fair attacker is probably the best tier 4 cruiser for ranked uh, simply because of that um, that ability to actually tank incoming damage from battleships being able to actually angle your armor against it whereas with this um, you haven't got a lot of wriggle room when it comes to angling your armor because you've only got that tiny thin belt However, uh, for playing, uh, say, standard in a non-competitive way, or maybe playing your tier 4 premiums in order to get your uh, tier 4 premium supplies, uh, yeah, I could see um, I could see your Hagi being picked out, uh, considering that your options are Krasny Krem, or the Bremshansky, or the Hock Hock Hocknick, so if you're a cruiser player, you're probably going to be picking the uh, Hagi out of, the, out of them, unless you'd like the, uh, the Krasny Krem, I should say. So, um, 45,000 damage, 2 kills, 46 hits on target, and 2 torpedoes uh, coming in top of the team, which is fair enough, and make myself a decent profit uh, with a premium count. Um, that's actually a very good profit, but then she's a tier 4 premium, so obviously maybe she has uh, slightly better earnings in comparison to the normal tech tree cruisers. Well, if you have enjoyed this review, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you like this content, content, feel free to subscribe. And if you are already subscribed, I'd say thank you very much. I'd also like to say thank you to the lovely patrons who are appearing on screen, as this is a premium ship review. If you want to support the channel on Patreon, our link is down in the description, along with the email address for the channel if you want to send in any of your own game captures. Well, until next time, I'm the Gareth Major, and back to the port.